Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on solving quadratic equations by factoring when a equals 1. Now let's get started. First, let's do a quick review on factoring. What is factoring? It is finding two numbers whose product is a third number. For example, let's look at the factors of 20. Now remember, the factors of 20 are two numbers whose product, meaning two numbers that you multiply together, will equal 20. Well, we have 1 and 20 because 1 times 20 is 20. We have 2 times 10, and we also have 4 times 5. Now that is basic factoring. Now let's look at what is factoring a trinomial. It is finding two binomials whose product is a trinomial. Now let's look at an example of this. Here we have two binomials whose product, that is when we multiply them together, equal this trinomial. We refer to these two binomials as the factored form of this trinomial. In today's lesson, we are going to take a quadratic equation and we are going to write it in factored form and we are going to use that factored form to then find our solutions. So let's get started on that. Now the first step in solving by factoring is to find the factors of C that when added equal B. Now what I mean by that is you need to find the factors of the C value. In our example this would be the 6. What are the numbers that you can multiply together to equal 6 but if you add those numbers they will equal 5, which is the B value. Now the second step is to write in factored form by arranging your factors in parentheses. Now when we get to our example, I'll show you what this means. Now the third step is to set each binomial equal to 0 and solve each one for x. Now let's do an example together. Our example is x squared minus 2x minus 35 equals 0. Our first step is to find the factors of c, which is negative 35, that when added would equal to the b value, which is negative 2. So let's do that. So what are the factors of negative 35? Well, we know that we could say 1 times negative 35, or we could say negative 1 times 35. We also could say uh, 5 times negative 7, and negative 5 times positive 7. So those are our only factors for th negative 35. Now, which of these factor pairs could we add together to get negative 2? Well, I think it's really obvious that it's going to be one of these two pairs because 1 plus negative 35 and negative 1 plus 35 is not anywhere near negative 2. So if I look at this one first, I have negative 5, I would say plus 7. Well, negative 5 plus 7 would be positive 2. And I need them to add up to negative 2. So that means it's going to be this factor pair right here. 5 times negative 7 is negative 35, and 5 plus negative 7 is negative 2. Now let's go to step 2. Now we are ready to write the trinomial part of this equation in factored form. Now as you see, I have two sets or two pairs of parentheses started and x is the first term in each, set, in each pair of parentheses because x times x is x squared. Now I'm going to write a factor of 35 in each parentheses and when I do so I will take the sign with the number. So in the first parentheses because I have the factor of 5, positive 5, I'm going to write plus 5. And in the second set of parentheses, because I have the factor of negative 7, I will write minus 7. 
At this point, it might be a good time to check yourself to make sure that you factored it correctly, and you can do so by using the FOIL method. x times x is x squared. We have x times negative 7, which is negative 7x, and then we have 5 times x, which is 5x, and if you combine those like terms, negative 7x plus 5x is negative 2x. And then for our last terms, we say 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. So you can check yourself to make sure you have factored correctly. Now for the third step, and that is to set each binomial equal to 0 and solve each one for x. The reason we can do this is because, let's look back at step 2. If you wanted to solve for x in the x plus 5 binomial, you could divide both sides of this equation by x minus 7. And on the right side, what is 0 divided by anything? It's 0. So that means you would have x plus 5 equals 0. And that's, so that's why you can set each one. It's kind of like we're just taking a shortcut instead of showing all of that work. So I'm going to take x plus 5, set it equal to 0, and then to solve for x, I just need to subtract 5 from both sides. So x equals negative 5. Now I'm going to do the same over here. I have x minus 7 equals 0. Add 7 to both sides of the equation. And I have x equals positive 7. Now why don't we check our work to make sure we've done this correctly. First, I'm going to take negative 5 and I'm going to plug it in for the x values in the original equation. So we have negative 5 squared, well that's 25. And then we have negative 2 times negative 5, that will be positive 10. So basically I have 25 plus 10, which is 35, minus 35 equals 0. And that's true. So that means that x equals negative 5 is a good solution. Now let's check x equals 7. If I plug 7 in for the x, I have 7 squared, which is 49. And this would be a negative 2 times 7, which is negative 14. So I would have 49 minus 14, and that is 35. And so I have 35 minus 35 is 0. So again, x, plus, x equals 7 is a good solution. Now let's think about this graphically real quick. What we've just found are solutions. What does that look like on the graph? That means we have found the x-intercepts. We could write our answers like this. Negative 5, 0, that's one of our solutions. And 7, 0 is the other one. These would be the x-intercepts of our parabola on the graph. Now let's look at one more example. We have the equation x squared minus 10x plus 9 equals 0. The first step is to find the factors of 9 that when added will equal negative 10. Now the factors of 9 are 3 times 3, negative 3 times negative 3, 1 times 9, and negative 1 times negative 9. Now which of these factor pairs, when added together, would equal negative 10? And the answer is negative 1 times negative 9. Negative 1 times negative 9 equals positive 9, and negative 1 plus negative 9 equals negative 10. Now the second step is to write our factors in factored form. So remember we have two sets of parentheses, and we can start each one with x because x times x is x squared. And in the first set of parentheses, I'm going to write minus 1. And in the second set of parentheses, I'm going to write minus 9. Now for the third step, I will set each binomial equal to 0 and solve each one for x. So my solutions for this quadratic equation are x equals 1 and x equals 9. Now I hope this video has helped you 
um, and understanding how to solve quadratic equations by using factoring. And I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.